Now, the skill that Georgina is about to demonstrate is, of course, very difficult and takes specialist training to achieve, as Andy Talbot found out. Sea mammals are the masters of deep diving. Some seals and whales can spend well over an hour submerged. Humans can also learn to stay underwater for long periods and at depth, and that's because of the mammalian dive reflex. When a mammal dives underwater, changes in the body start to happen. The heart rate lowers naturally to preserve precious oxygen. As well as that, blood is redistributed around the body. It's drawn away from the less important parts and pulls around the vital organs like the brain and the heart and the lungs. Free divers rely on this reflex to allow them to swim longer and deeper underwater. Ian Donald from Freedive UK is going to teach me some techniques to help my body cope with the increased pressure at depth, which will hopefully allow me to go deeper for longer. The training will prepare my lungs for what happens to them underwater. Best way to describe this is with, with a bottle, okay. is that at the surface we're at nice full volume. As you go deeper, at just at 10 metres, you're at twice the surface pressure, all right? So this will now be half the volume. So the deeper you go, you might be at 40 metres, where your lung volume's at a fifth of what it is at the surface, but the lungs won't collapse on themselves. Even at depth, there's still plenty of oxygen left in the body. So it's a case of controlling the need to draw breath. The urge to breathe comes from a massive increase of carbon dioxide, the waste product, after metabolising the oxygen. As freedivers, we learn to push through this and exploit those last remaining drops of oxygen that we still got within our body. So you can be down at 30, 40 metres, but you still have enough to come back up to the surface. Before I attempt to dive, Ian has a number of exercises on the surface to get the mammalian dive reflex working. How long do you reckon you did on that one? Maybe two and a half minutes. Ah, more than that, I've got 3.15. So this should just give you that little bit of an edge when it comes to actually starting doing the deeper dives. To get my lungs used to pressure and to test my endurance, Ian's taking me to an underwater cave, 15 metres deep, that has a tunnel 20 metres long. Once inside, there'll be no turning back. I'll have to complete the swim, so it's a mental as well as a physical challenge. Just in case, though, we have safety divers in place. Go for it. At this depth, my lungs will have contracted to less than half their size. The pressure on them feels like there's something heavy lying across my chest. It's important I stay focused to keep going right to the end. And after a minute and 13 seconds, I make it back to the surface. Ah, oh, that was great. Felt quite comfortable. Hold my breath all the way through that, so that dive and uh, ease tuition is giving the confidence to try something a little bit deeper. Five minutes away is the shipwreck of the SS Mohegan, which sank 116 years ago. At 25 metres, it's beyond all but advanced recreational scuba divers' limits. So it's quite a challenge on one single breath of air. What we're going to try and do is slowly start to increase your depth, OK, so that the lungs don't suffer any sort of trauma by being compressed too quickly. For safety, I'm attached to a line which can get me to the surface swiftly. This is a lot tougher than the tunnel. The further down I go, the tighter my lungs get and the urge to breathe is a lot stronger. As I reach the wreck, even though it's been lying here for over a hundred years, there's still remnants to be seen. But it's a brief look before Ian decides to get me back up top. That's amazing. You get down there, you can see the wreck spread out beneath you. And then the way back up, I find the closer I got to the surface, the more that, that need to breathe was imperative. And when I actually surfaced, I felt a little bit lightheaded, like I stood up too quickly. It's an amazing experience. You get a true sense of freedom. It gives me a little bit of insight into just how a true marine mammal lives. He was oh, great. Yeah, he, he was, was, wasn't it? But just watching yeah. that makes you feel breathless, doesn't it? Um, and Ian, Andy's instructor from the film, is with us now. So 
Uh, Andy did really well. He did three he did. minutes there. Georgina is going for six, however. So just talk us through what state she'll be in now then as she prepares to turn over. So, so at the moment, really, she's just relaxing. She's doing everything she can just to keep her heart rate as low as possible. Uh, keep in the zone, ignore everything that's going on around her. I was going to say, we're on live telly here, this is yeah. not easy. No, this, not is, this, is, this is pushing it really to the limits of what we can do, really, as far as ignoring the outside world. Yeah. And yeah. when she's ready, then she'll, she'll go for it. OK, and that difference, as far as the body is concerned, between the three and the, yeah. you know, five-plus minutes that we'll expect to see here. Yeah, they're, they're, physically, there's not really that much difference. It's just that uh, her ability has got that much further down the line, so yeah. she'll experience a lot of those sort of negative sensations a lot later than Andy did. And I know exactly... Exactly how it feels because we are free dive together yes, uh, have, on, yeah. on country fight now Warwick and now we understand that you, you have difficulty when you're swimming yeah I'm not um, naturally buoyant like most people are so I can actually sit on the bottom of a swimming pool right. without having to wave my arms I can literally sit there obviously not for very long because I'm not an experienced sort of but is it, I mean, is this something that you'd be into? So you can, can actually do yeah. that and maybe enjoy the... It would be useful, the, wouldn't it? It would be a useful skill to have to be able to sit on the bottom of the pool for, for a lot longer. Yeah, than I, you just need one of them do. ropes to pull yourself back up again <laughs> that Andy <laughs> had in the film. There we are. But uh, I think the main thing we have to point out, you know, Warwick fancies it and, and Matt's had a go, but you have to have correct training. It's really important, isn't it? Yeah, it's like anything in the water, um, but especially with this, find a teacher, find a club and uh, never, ever do it on your own. That's the, that's the main thing. Yeah. Well, thanks, Ian. You're going to get yourself up there just yes. to make sure that everything's yes. right because uh, Georgina will be going uh, for this very, very shortly. Um, but first, whilst they do get ready, uh, we've all heard the expression as safe as houses. But that wasn't the case for one lady who's had double trouble in Norfolk.